Welcome to Talking Man with a Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Saviello. A special guest here from Franklin Memorial Hospital in Maine Health. Welcome. Well, thank you, Tom. And you are? I'm Andy. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Maine Health. He's the big guy, huh? He's, he's the boss. And, and who are you? Trent Pasachos. I'm the Trent. president. Oh, so you got the big boss and the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is pretty impressive. Just to come on our show. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so, Andy, we know all about Trent. <laughs> Actually, and I've said this, and I say this publicly to other people, we are lucky to have him here because he's the most important thing for me for Franklin Memorial is to become part of the community yeah. and be recognized as that. This man shows up. Well, we feel the same way. We're, we feel fortunate that Trampus is part of Maine Health and, and leading um, Franklin Community Health Network the way he does. He's done a remarkable job in a short period of time. And he buys beer when we go out. So it's even better. <laughs> That's, even better. Keep it, keep it. That's right. Andy, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, how long have you been with Maine Health? Or how did you come through the organization to get where you are? And then we can talk about all the opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So I am I'm a family physician. And so I've practiced medicine most of my career. At some point, started getting involved in leadership and began to realize it had an ability to, an opportunity to really impact care delivery beyond the walls of my practice and started spending more and more time in leadership and ultimately became the chief executive officer of a health system in Central Virginia. And while I was there, had the opportunity to interview for the role at Maine Health. And when I got the phone call about Maine Health, one of the things that jumped out was I was well aware of Maine Health's reputation for quality and safety in our industry. And so that immediately got my attention. And then as I began to learn more about the organization and more about the states of Maine and New Hampshire, began to realize that there is a really, really special opportunity here to change healthcare. Because the reality is all of us know amazing individuals in healthcare like Trampas. We have amazing physicians and nurses and physical therapists and respiratory therapists and individuals who are helping support all of that. And I think all of us who've experienced healthcare as a patient at some point in our lives can think back to a physician or a nurse or someone who really went above and beyond to do something special for us and demonstrate caring at a time that we needed it. I agree. I mean, that, that's why I'm a supporter of Franklin Memorial Hospital from yeah. a personal standpoint. My family went through some things about 20 years ago, and there's still one nurse that I remember today who communicated with us, told us what was going on. Um, and just recently, probably six months ago, I had to use the emergency room, and um, Dr. Gannon was on, and he was phenomenal. Yeah. The only problem he had is that when they did my test, I had the results before he did. <laughs> so when he came into the room, I said, hey, my blood work's okay. I think I can go home. So, but it, I just, those, he's, he's, he certainly sticks out in my mind because you're in the emergency room, you're under stress, you're trying to figure it out. He came in and very calmly talked to me about this, we're going to do this and this. So my hat's, hat's off. To, it always has been, to Franklin. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, you think about all of that great care. And then when you start to think about healthcare as a whole in the healthcare system, for some reason, the sum of the whole is not as good as the sum of the parts. And we've got real opportunities, I think, here at Maine Health to really challenge the way healthcare is delivered, make it better, and ultimately also make it more affordable because we have to do that. We have to ensure that everyone can access our system and really get the kind of care that they need to. Again, I agree. I, you probably may, may or not know this. I'm the only Republican that consistently supported Maine Care Expansion because I felt it was essential for people to have care. Because if you, we were paying, if they waited and didn't get the colonoscopy, I know for this hospital, I think, and I'll ask you later, Tramp, I hope that still made a big difference when Janet finally put it in place. I was kind of in my head against the wall, but after I got out. <laughs> So Andy, I mean, I think yeah. we should probably go right after the, the elephant that's in the room. What's mm -hmm. going on with Anthem? I mean, it's hit, all the news is out there. A lot of state employees are concerned Absolutely. because they do carry Anthem. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm graduated from that and I have Aetna, so I'm good, <laughs> yeah. I think. So I, I want to start by saying I'm so sorry for anyone who's experiencing anxiety right now around this. The last thing we want to do as a healthcare system is induce suffering in our community. And I realize that we're at a point where that is happening. And at the same time, as we think about changing health care, as Trampas knows, we spend a lot of time as an organization talking about how we're going to achieve our vision. And our vision is working together so our communities are the healthiest in America. 
And I'm bound and determined we're going to achieve that. I think we have a greater opportunity to do that here than anywhere else. But it's become, unfortunately, incredibly clear to us that our partnership with Anthem is becoming an obstacle to us achieving that vision. We wouldn't do this to try to prove a point. Right. I, I don't want to pick a fight. My leadership coach tells me I need to be meaner. Um, <laughs> I'm not interested in trying to be confrontational. We're not trying to settle a score. We're not trying to do any of those things. But the thing that I am willing to die on the hill for is our vision of working together so our communities are the healthiest in America. And right now, um, we've got a relationship where that's not going to allow that to occur. And unfortunately, this is really happening to us at the worst possible time. Right, in the middle of COVID. In the middle of COVID. And I can't tell you what a distraction this has been. We needed our leaders focused on helping our care team get through what has been really just a horrific experience in dealing with all the challenges that COVID, the workforce shortage, all of these things have presented to us. We have to deal with this. And unfortunately, um, what we are seeing here now in Maine has been experienced in other parts of the country where Anthem exists. And so recently in the state of Georgia, the Bureau of Insurance just fined Anthem $5 million really? for behavior that's very, very similar to what we're experiencing. And just this week, a federal mediator in, in the state of Indiana has fined Anthem $4.5 million for behavior that's also very similar to what we're experiencing here. We've talked to a number of healthcare systems across the country who've had challenges with Anthem to understand what our options are and how do we try to figure this out and unfortunately realize that this was our only option to change and, the relationship. Can, can you talk about the behavior? I don't know how much you can get into details with it, sure. just in general. I think we've read some yeah, things in the paper. Absolutely. So uh, we believe that they owe us over $70 million in payments. They're as bad as the state that, was. <laughs> <laughs> $70 million in payments over the last three years. And we're not the only providers um, in that circumstance. Um, others have publicly talked about some of the challenges they're facing too in terms of tens of millions of dollars. And at the same time, um, they have decided to change the way they're paying us that's different than the way we negotiated and agreed in our contract. And we, we can't abide by that and live under those circumstances. And they're doing it um, in a way that's particularly damaging to us. And if we don't challenge this behavior and it continues, then it's going to threaten our ability to provide needed services. And what really is frustrating is it's going to threaten the ability for us to provide needed services in places like Franklin. At a time where COVID has taught us that we cannot be effective if our goal is to try to drive all care to Portland. That's right. what we don't want to do. We actually want to try to enhance and grow our services in our community hospitals like Franklin Memorial and um, really try to keep care as close as to home where patients live. And what Anthem's doing to us right now is going to prevent us from being able to be as effective as we need to in accomplishing that. I think it's important just to point out what you said because I remember from Trampas when COVID first hit, when we had a sick person here, they shipped them to Portland. Right. And so that that was where you had it. It was unknown. We didn't know where right. we were going. Right. You had a, a staff down there and had all the resources that you could. But as you started to understand it, they came back into Franklin. Yeah, into yeah they the came hospital. back. Our staff had the, the ability to, to learn from what happened at Maine Medical Center with those patients. And, and then we were able to take care of the patients here. And, and then, they're clo as you said, they're close to home. And so people, even yeah. though they may have only come in to wave in the window at the time, at least they could wave in the window right, exactly. and not drive all the way to Portland to do so. Yeah, so that's a trend we want to see continue. And we really learned that lesson through the, through the pandemic. And that wasn't my great idea. It was really... Trampus, some of our local health system presidents and our chief medical officers really understanding that, hey, this is going to be better for patients. It's ultimately going to be more effective and actually believe that long term it's going to help reduce the cost of care if we can keep patients closer to home and not be focused on trying to drive care um, simply to one location. Not to say that there will still be a need for a specialized facility like Maine Medical Center. We do have really high, high, you know, high level care for those rare conditions that require it. Um, but being able to do more in our local health systems and our local communities is really important to us. Well, that, and that is important. I mean, it's like not having to go someplace else to get a colonoscopy or right. someplace else to get something else done because we have the capability, your chemotherapy or right. cancer, your, your oncology ward, to be able to stay home and go home instead of drive and then have to come back again. So I understand that. that and that's something the hospital has certainly worked towards increasing in doing so. Yeah. So. Tell me, I don't know if I can ask this right, but as, it, they, as a primary provider, as a, a uh, in-source uh, mm -hmm. thing, what will, you guys have 
stated this and implemented it already where they're no longer recognized or you're giving some time? No, we're, we're giving people uh, nine months. Nine and months, so okay. our, our notice date, um, as is allowed in the contract, is um, to give, give notice. And we're giving excessive notice um, of one one twenty three would be the effective date. And we are hopeful that we'll come to some sort of resolution before them for sure. And we're still interested in partnering. That vision statement I mentioned, partnering together so our communities are the healthiest in America, we know that's so aspirational. We can't do it alone. Right. Um, we need, we're going to need everybody. We're going to need all of our communities, and we're going to need good partners to help us do that. And so we, we talk about maybe the most important word in that vision statement of working together so our communities are the healthiest in America is together because we're going to need everyone helping us to work toward achieving that. And so we need good partners who are aligned with that. And so as corny as it sounds, when we talk about new partnerships, um, the first question I ask a potential partner right after we introduce each other is, how are you going to help us achieve our vision of working together so our communities are the healthiest in America? If they can't articulate that clearly, they, they may be great yeah, people. No. I mean, they're wonderful, but, but we, that's not who we need. We need people who are really committed. This is a cause, and we need people who are committed to that cause. Wow. That's pretty profound, but it's true. Yeah. They, they have to be committed. They have to be a partner in the, in the program, otherwise it's not going to work. Absolutely. And we have to be good partners, too. We recognize that, and we're trying hard to do that. And we don't always get it right. We didn't in the past, even with Anthem and other payers, recognized that mistake, corrected it, and have been working really hard to get it right now. And when we've had other disagreements, and we've had other disagreements with partners, we've been able to work through all of those. It's not been a problem, except with Anthem. And, and, and without stating any other names, there are other insurance companies that you work with. Absolutely. Right? You haven't had this kind of issue. No, with them, you know? no. And we they, wanna, they're part of the partnership. Absolutely. <laughs> and we want to have good partnership conversations with them around things that we can do to be better as a health system. One of the conversations that we're starting to engage around is, what can we do to help patients really avoid hospitalization unnecessarily, um, even if that means we lose revenue from doing that? Um, because ultimately it's better for patients and we need to create value, not extract value. We need to think about how we do things that are really, really beneficial to our communities and our patients. So we're trying to figure out ways we can get better at doing that. We just announced a new partnership with an organization called Agilon on Medicare Advantage patients, which is going to help us do just that. And in theory, if we do better with that partner, we'll get paid more in some cases, but lose revenue by no, keeping I mean, people, yeah, keeping people out of the hospital effectively and providing better care, keeping them out of the emergency room unnecessarily. And so we're willing to put ourselves in that position if it's the right thing for our patients. And, and it makes sense. I mean, if you catch it early as we talk yeah. about Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. you can solve a problem mm -hmm. long before it becomes chronic or really a crisis. And sure. once it hits crisis, the type of medicines that are involved are so significant. So, so uh, we have a year. Uh, yeah. and, and for you guys to continue the conversation Absolutely. and until that time and you'll keep people informed as we you will. have by letting them know that this is happening which I think is absolutely fair yeah. should have told the state that about 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> that was a unique experience I I learned all about PIP payments yeah, and learned about uh, right. the, the difference and who had to pay the difference and and then was finally there when we got finally paid back. I think it was like only four hundred and some odd million dollars. So it's a little bit, a little right. chump change. Yeah, yeah. One so, thing about healthcare is complicated. It is complicated. It, it is. is very complicated. So what's going on with COVID now? Where are we? we you know, I, I haven't had my fourth shot yet. I'm getting ready. Now I think next week there's a clinic here at UMF. Um, I'm a believer in the shot. I also respect those that have decided not to have it. That's their choice. But um, I'm in that age bracket. <clears throat> when I look at the deaths. Because I like to look at numbers, <laughs> sixty to eighty are in deep trouble if you don't have the shot and you get the disease. Mm -hmm. So I've got it, and, and I also because I have a granddaughter that's two who hasn't had their shot yet, uh, to be able to visit with her and not feel like I've carried anything into the house with me. So, where are we? Where we're maybe even in Franklin? Where are we? And, and health certainly in the health system, health wise. Yeah, I can I can take on the Franklin piece of it. So here here locally, we're doing really well with with COVID. Um, we are experiencing some, you know, higher positivity rate with the, the recent variant that we have, and we're, we're monitoring that daily. Um, from an inpatient perspective, our, our hospitalizations hasn't really increased a whole lot, maybe one to two, um, sorry, usually 80 or average daily instances of COVID patients. 
Um, but overall, we're, we're doing pr pretty well on that. And if, as you mentioned, one of the best protections is getting, making sure you have the up-to-date in your vaccinations and all of those things. That's the, the, the biggest thing you can do. Um, but, but, you know, mostly we're getting back to some of our normal business that we haven't had a chance to get to. Um, and we're doing quite well in that regard also. So. By the way, I forgot to make fun of your tie. <laughs> Although, everybody know out there, he actually tied it himself, I can tell. And I thank you for honoring the show by wearing the tie. Next yeah, time I'm feeling a little on, underdressed. Yeah, I know. On, we'll have to have you have a bow tie. Um, so what about health system wide? Yeah, you know, I think it, it goes along the lines of what we're seeing here in Franklin. I think we are certainly seeing um, lower numbers um, than we've seen in a long time, which is, which is wonderful around COVID. And at the same time, as Trampas uh, pointed out, boy, we're busy with all the care that didn't occur during the period of time that we were so focused on COVID. Mm -hmm. So for our care team, um, for some individuals who are just absolute heroes and super inspiring, um, they're tired and exhausted, but they're not getting much rest. They're having to continue to kind of continue to help a lot of sick patients who need care that wasn't able to occur in the last yeah, couple of years. And that's something that's a very important point because people think about the shot and they think about themselves, but what they don't realize is how much care got postponed. Yeah, that's right. And to some people it made a huge difference. So your shot protects you, but it also helps us get to the backlog of it, other people that have health conditions. So it's, it's yeah. not just about you being protected, it's, <laughs> it's about exactly having right. minimizing my disease if I get it, so that someone else that has a heart problem and needs a colonoscopy or a cancer treatment, they can get it done and get it put off. Yeah, it's such an important point. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's something I, I've learned a little bit about this over time. I mean, you've had to send a lot of good educators on here. <laughs> I mean, they, they weren't bad. You know, I, I harassed them appropriately. Yeah, but it's good yeah. to know that Trampas has put on the recruitment bulletin that you get a chance Absolutely. to go on at the uh, Talk and Main show. Yeah. And, and Ryan's done a super job of bringing them on. So what what's now going on at Franklin Memorial? I, we, well, I think the last time you were talk, we were on, we talked about some of the new ideas that that are bringing coming forth, and maybe both can share some of that. But yeah, so you know, I think a lot of stuff is happening in, in Franklin, and in this this past month, um, we celebrated a, a milestone that's really important to us. Um, we've uh, recruited our 60th physician, 60th, 60th wow, physician since since uh, 2020. Um, must be that brochure. <laughs> Sixtieth. That's great. 60th. Um, so we, yeah, it's just been a, a significant um, a milestone, and, and we've ramp, revamped several service lines: our ED service line, hospital service lines. Um, uh, another new orthopedic surgeon um, is exciting for us, also. Um, so, but really, um, the recruitment and, and uh, bringing in quality staff and making sure that we're retaining our staff is something that's been the most. Um, is at the forefront of what we're working on right now. Some of the ones I've met are ex-military too. It's yes. just that mm -hmm. they've retired and, and uh, brought come brought their skills into the to the to hospital system, which I think is phenomenal. First, they're veterans, and thank you very much for your service. But mm -hmm. also now you can continue to serve us by being part of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think what they've experienced is far beyond some of the th docs that do come in. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your uh, psychiatrist came on though. She's mm -hmm. tried to analyze me, but she gave up. <laughs> <laughs> she really did. It was too late. I was, I was too far gone. I was, uh, yeah. Now, you, I think there's some hope of doing some expansions of things at the hospital or, or just really growing the programs we presently have. Yeah. yeah, so we have a lot of opportunity here in, in our community with the population we have that we have a lot of services we can implement. And that's some of the areas we're looking at, such as expanding our oncology services, um, looking at the size of our campus also, what makes sense for our future, and making sure we're building or, or, or moving services around to, to meet the needs of the community. So a lot of great work uh, there. Um, of course, it's up to the, the, the big boss here to well, make remember, that final decision. Frank Memorial goes <laughs> to the top of the list. Of course. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, just want to put a plug yeah, in. Hey, absolutely. you did pay me to say that. You know, I just want you to well, you know, it's interesting because when I drive up here, and I did this a few months ago, drove up here and saw you know, and I think about how long it takes to get here from Portland, I saw an ambulance that was pulling up to the hospital from a community that's even farther away driving time than Portland. And so it makes you realize just how important Franklin is to a region, not just to a single community, and how many are really counting on the care we deliver here, which is why we're going to need to continue to make investments um, to ensure that the facility 
and the campus are up to doing what's going to be asked of it in and the you, future. And you bring up a good point that I have to give them a plug since the North Star guys. I mean, yeah. the people, oh guys and gals. Gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, what they're able to do in yeah. these ter terrible times and how they serve the community when they're out there. And you, neither one of you are here, but I can tell you when I started going to select board meetings and town meetings back in 2000, yeah. they were controversial because of the charges. And Dave Roby, to his credit, bless mm -hmm. his soul, came up with a formula. We went out and implemented, and it's now a non-issue in the town meetings mm -hmm. because they they feel like they're paying for the service that yeah. they're being provided, and it's it's so. And, but the people that are there, again, I know they look in on people that are out there to keep them from coming to the hospital. I know they get calls. Mm -hmm. They wish they didn't get called, but they are. They've been on the show too. Mike Senecal's mm -hmm. been on the show. Yeah. Great people. Yeah, and that service line and that formula has been used in other other communities as well. It's it's it's, it's a very innovative way of, of doing EMS. Yeah, yeah, those are real heroes who are creating value. Yeah, every and day. they're great. They, yeah. they really are, and so forth. So what else we got? I mean, what, what else are you guys doing? Are they, you sound like you're bored right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. Uh, no, you know, we're, we're, one of the things with Maine Health is we've all sort of come together as a family. And so now that we're all in the house together, we've kind of got to learn how to live together. And so we're spending some time focusing on some of that and how can we really make sure that we're delivering the very best care everywhere. What can we learn from each other? Um, there are a lot of things that I think Franklin can teach the rest of the system. And there's some things that we can learn from other places in the system. And so I think we've got real opportunities um, to continue to focus on improving our patient care, working on ways to lower the cost of care now that we're really all together as a system. And then we've just really embarked upon this past week in really launching our next uh, strategic planning process. And so we're at the normal expiration of our existing strategic plan. And now we're really looking out for a strategic plan to help us get through the next five years. And I think a lot of that is going to be evolutionary, not necessarily revolutionary in terms of what we're thinking about. But it's going to focus, I believe, on some things that really um, are around some of the things that are core. Really, you know, the experience of our, our, our care team at work, the experience of our patients, um, making sure we have access um, and not just... Um, not just the ability to reach, but really get care when you want to get care. And, um, and how do we get better in all of those different areas? And the reality is, I don't know what it'll be because Trampas and others are helping us build it um, all together as a family. And so we're excited to see what that might, what might and lead to. And it's good to. because, you know, when, when Franklin Memorial did kind of finally come together with Maine Health, which they had no choice. We couldn't survive on our own. Um, there was a lot of controversy about that. I haven't heard anything. I mean, I, I think that's a good sign from my perspective is that I'm out and about as Trampus knows and if somebody's going to complain about it, we, we actually have, I do a, sometimes do a radio show on Thursday. I didn't do it today because the radio station, local station was, to, the guy I do it with is on off for today. Yeah. But if somebody was going to complain about Franklin mm -hmm. Memorial Hospital, I can guarantee on that show <laughs> they would call and they would complain and I have not heard a word, which is a good sign. Yeah, yeah. the decision to join Maine Health is very pivotal, pivotal for Franklin. Um, and as you mentioned, it would be very hard for us to survive, especially in COVID. Um, yeah. So but it's, it's been a wonderful um, uh, unification, if you will, and being part of the families have been, been just amazing. Well, and I don't want anyone to um, think for a minute, it's not lost on us the important responsibility to ensure um, that Franklin is here and it's important in terms of the care we deliver, but you know, it's also important too as an employer in the community and important for the economy of the community. And so that's not lost in us either. And so one of the things we have done um, is really invested in our care team over the last year and a half, even though times have been tight, um, we just realize how important they are and that they need to earn fair wages and um, be taken care of. And so we're gonna continue to put a lot of focus on our care team in the upcoming years. And, and that's important. I mean, that's you want to keep those guys, especially my docs. You know, they're. they're, 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 they're I mean, Doctor Gunther, I got to have a chat. With him. Came in and had a conversation with me after I was still drugged up, and they told me about something. And I'm like, okay, then he came into the shop. Did I talk to you after you got? Yeah, I re, yeah, I don't remember what you told me. I don't have a clue. Uh, but he's a great guy too. He's another part of the, this community and been been out there and been been so forth. You know, it must be a challenge to be in your business because the technology must change like every five minutes almost. It, it is, and it's a huge disruptor too in, in trying to scan the horizon of what works for us, what how, what can we leverage, and, and we have a, a wonderful IT team at Maine Health and in here locally 
Um, and so very impressive individuals that, that run that. And so, yeah, the technology is, is, is just phenomenal. It's like I said, they're great because I can sit there on my phone. Oh, my test is in. Oh, I'm okay. I guess I'm good. I, I had to look at it. If it said I was bad, I would have been probably came in and said, oh, I think I'm in trouble. And that well, was impressive to me. Yeah, for sure. And I do think we've got opportunities to continue to use technology to really enhance the care that we deliver and the experience for our patients. But I'll also tell you too, just in practicing medicine for a number of years, the other thing that I began to realize is that while a lot of things change, how we connect with patients, the use of technology, how we get paid, all of those things, some things in healthcare are pretty timeless. The ability to really sit down and connect with an individual, um, the need to really show that someone that you care about them, um, really trying to always do the right thing. And at the end of the day, building that trusting relationship between a patient and a care team. And so I think at Maine Health, we'll have to do both. We'll have to continue to preserve those things that are really essential in providing care for individuals. And at the same time, embrace and use new technologies to help us do it better, less expensively, more conveniently for our patients. That's almost a great way to end. Anything that you'd like to close with besides that? That was phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one to follow. So. <laughs> He's your boss. You better not. <laughs> you don't get the last word on this one, Trampas. Hey, no, so. at the end of the day, I work for Trampas, right? My, my role is to help support those who are out mm -hmm. here really delivering the great care to our communities. And so... Um, I would agree. When I was a manager, I used to tell my staff, tell me what you need, I'll get it. That's mm -hmm. right. But don't ever have me have to do your job for you, because if you do, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> yeah. I, Mike, we don't have to worry about that here. <laughs> I don't think so. Mike, thank you. Yeah, would thank you. Would you come back on again in the I'd future? Be, I'd be happy That'd to. be great. Yeah, be Trampas, happy you're always welcome. Oh, I appreciate it. I'll yeah. buy the next beer. Uh, thank absolutely. you, Mike. It's been a pleasure to have yeah, you here. Absolutely. Good luck in your fight, and, and I really do appreciate what you've done with this community and supporting yeah. Franklin Memorial well, Hospital. It's what they've done. Yeah, they, they're a good team. They are. For sure. Thanks for tuning in for Talking Maine with the Bowtie Boys. We'll see you next time. That was great, guys.